I'm Susie Selleck. And I'm Ashley Dunning. Ever wonder how to stay motivated when things don't quite go to plan? We caught up with somebody and he just might have some answers for us. And for one former Philadelphia Eagle, a crippling diagnosis may have restricted his mobility, but it sure hasn't dampened his spirit. Not for a guy like Kevin Turner. Later on, we've got George Anastasia joining us the famous kitchen consulary, and he's also bringing us some gruesome details about a former mobster. All of this coming up next on this week's episode of Philly Man. I've been learning about organized crime for the past 30 years. I've met a lot of guys. Nobody is as fascinating or as interesting as Angelo Lutz. He went from being a crook to being a cook. His restaurant, the Kitchen Council Yuri Cafe, packs him in in Collinswood, New Jersey, and his story is a story of redemption. Eight years ago, I was sitting in federal prison in uh, Petersburg, Virginia, and uh, today I'm sitting inside the Kitchen Council Yuri Cafe here in uh, Collinswood, New Jersey. It's a big jump, you know, quantum leap. When I came home from prison, uh, as an ex-offender, I was uh, faced with minimal opportunities. Uh, no one wanted to help me. I was basically down and out on my own. Opportunity arrived with uh, Brian Tierney uh, at the time when he owned the Inquirer. We started doing cooking with the kitchen consigliere, which you were a part of. And uh, from there, we had a lunch at Mr. Joe's down in South Philly, across street from Termini's. And uh, I'm sitting there and we're reading and I'm watching what's going on. And I said to you, I can do this. And you said, what do you mean? I said, I can do this. this. This is my idea. I mean, this is peasant food. This is what my grandparents and my parents grew up on. So I said, you know, I said, I could do this, George. Start looking. Sure enough, found a hot dog place that went out of business in Collingswood around the corner. Started there November the 10th, 2010. And November the 10th, 2015, God willing, be my five-year anniversary in my new location, which is expanded from 30 seats to 96. Currently open six nights a week, but we're hoping in September to open up to seven. And we're dinner only, except on Saturday and Sundays we do a dinner menu, but we offer at lunchtime. And, uh, you know, pretty successful. Many years ago, Bum Phillips said that, you know, we're gonna knock on the door, we're gonna bang on the door, and then we're gonna knock the door down. Uh, he was a famous football coach. And uh, it was my situation. I just kept trying and trying and trying, and I just didn't give up because to give up would mean that, you know, I was just gonna, wander off into the abyss because there were no options for me and I, as a convicted felon. When you were on trial, and I was there when you were, you testified on your own defense, and at one point you said, I'm a cook, not a crook. This is it. I mean, I am. I'm a cook. I'm not a crook. I was never a crook. You know, this restaurant is my stage and uh, my customers are my audience. And uh, every night at four o'clock, the curtain goes up and uh, that's it, that's the show. Now, one of the things we're talking about at, at Philly Man Magazine and the Philly Man television show is potentially a, a series where you would be here talking about your past life, cooking and booking with the kitchen council. You're a handicapped. Phenomenal idea. You know, I think it would be a unique opportunity on a, a Friday night for guys to turn in, especially guys that love the action. You have a little entertainment. We do a little bit of a nice New England clam chowder that day. I mean, there's always a way to interact with everything and make it all work together. It's a good fit, cooking and booking. Cooking and booking with the kitchen consigliere and George Anastasia. All right. You may recognize the name Kevin Turner a fullback for the Eagles in the mid to late 90s, a collegiate player for University of Alabama, and prior to coming to Philadelphia, a fullback for the New England Patriots. During Kevin's career, he suffered numerous concussions, but it's all part of the game, and he continued playing like any player would. In May of 2010, Kevin was diagnosed with ALS, a disease that attacks the nerves in the brain and spinal cord, resulting in paralysis and loss of muscle control. There is no cure. But since his 2010 diagnosis, Kevin has brought awareness to concussion-related issues in football and has even started his own research organization, the Kevin Turner Foundation, in hopes of finding a cure. Four years ago, longtime friend and supporter Bob Penza started the Kevin Turner Foundation golf outing. In mid-July, Medford Village Golf Club in South Jersey hosted the fourth annual event. Although he has been debilitated because of ALS, Kevin has made his way back to the golf course where he used to play with friends and teammates. I wanted to do something where he could come back to the Philly area and uh, get together with uh, 
some of his old teammates and friends and people that love him and care about him um, and help his foundation, you know, which was about raising awareness, you know, get get the word out about what his foundation is, is trying to do and create a reunion of sorts for Kevin. I was diagnosed with uh, ALS and uh, although it, uh, that's hard to say. Since being diagnosed five years ago, Kevin's overall health has dramatically deteriorated. He is now restricted to a wheelchair and has minimal speech. He may not be able to play football or golf at his favorite course, but in no way has this stopped him from fully living each day. He remains hopeful for the future and is determined to find a cure for ALS. His spirits are amazing, um, which is consistent with who Kevin is. I mean, his, his attitude is he knows it's an un, undefeated uh, opponent, um, but it doesn't break his spirit. And if anything, he says one day at a time, you know, he's, he, uh, he's not bitter, you know, about uh, what has happened to him. Um, he, he's very spiritual. And uh, his, his dream was to, was to play in the NFL. From the age of five, he wanted to play in the NFL. And he lived his dream, and he has no regrets about that. Runs again. The football brotherhood is a strong bond that has brought many together. Kevin may not have crossed paths with other players on the field, but off the field, they're all running the same play to put an end to this disease. Well, that's what the NFL alumni is all about. You know, that's why we proudly wear that, that shield and that crown up there. And it's all about helping the other guy, you know, caring and giving. And Kevin's the kind of guy that, if you knew him the way I knew him, he's just an inspiration to everyone. And you know, you got to help because he was old school. Uh, well, yeah, you know, in Alabama and all the stuff they used to do down there. But there wasn't a wedge that he didn't like to blow up. And of course, his fullback and you know, just throwing his head in there all the time. He was probably one of the better fullbacks I think the Eagles ever had. You know, it's just a matter of attrition that it, they would, that he had to, he had to go. And and uh, but I was sure sorry to see him go. 34, <laughs> loved him. I mean, he was a great guy then, great teammate. You know, there was no animosity towards me or, you know, anybody else in the room. And, you know, we went out and we competed. I mean, we, he and I, we lifted together, we ran together. And he was, you know, he's a fast guy. You know, he was a little faster than I was coming out and stuff. So I always had to, you know, I felt like I had to do be a little quicker because, you know, Kevin brought that competition. I mean, he was a solid teammate that you could count on in a clutch situation. It's amazing how an individual as healthy and strong as Kevin Turner is overcome with a disease and left with sound mind, but a heartbreaking fate. It forces the obvious question, why him and not me? Yeah, no, you ask yourself that all the time. And that's why, you know, whenever there's something for him, and I, you know, I try to keep in contact with his representatives just to kind of see how he's doing, because I know it's tough for him to communicate on the phone and stuff like that, but I don't have an answer. I mean, I don't, you know, I, I do have the memory losses, I have the headaches and the different things like that, but, and you find yourself coaching different. You know, you don't coach it like you used to coach it in terms of being as hard forward and straight ahead because now the head is not a weapon anymore. They used to teach that as a weapon, but the hardest thing on your body is your head and your helmet. So that's what they, you know, kind of what you learned growing up. So. You can see the culture is changing, and you know I think Kevin's uh, affliction that he has has, you know, a great bearing on why you know parents look at the sport a lot different. You know, football's not made for everyone, and would I play again? Absolutely. You know, I enjoyed the life that it gave me, the friends that I've made, and the friends that I still have. Had it happened to me, you know, I, I you know would I say the same thing? I don't know. You know, but I enjoyed you know, the whole aspect of the game, football, and I tell my kids that if you don't want to play, it's okay. It's not a question of your manhood or your toughness, and that should never come into effect. But if you do play, then it's a question of your manhood and your toughness. You know, so it's a double-edged sword that, you know, I try not to, you know, I would not want to put on anybody, but I just tell them that the game is not for everyone. And if it's not for you, don't take it as any slight. You know, like, you can support Kevin and his efforts in finding a cure by visiting kevinturnerfoundation.org. You will find more information about his fight and what you can do to help.
I'm George Anastasia, and this week on Mob Scene, we're going to talk about a new movie, Black Mass, that opened on September 18th in theaters throughout the country. The movie stars Johnny Depp in the role of James Whitey Bulger, one of the most despicable mobsters in recent American history. Bulger was a high echelon FBI informant in Boston. He fed information to the feds, helping them build cases against the New England Mafia. At the same time, Bulger had his own criminal organization that filled that vacuum. He was involved in drug dealing, loan sharking, extortion, gun running, and murder. All the while, he used the shield of the FBI to protect him from other investigative agencies that were trying to build cases against him. Johnny Depp gives one of his finest performances in the role of Whitey Bulger in Black Mass. But the story Black Mass is not the FBI's finest hour. They say we're born with a purpose. Sounds pretty simple. But when life throws you curveballs, how do you handle that? Well, for one guy, Kevin Cutter, who ended up at the UFC gym in Springfield, he found a way to get his life back on track, and we had a chance to sit down with him and hear what keeps him inspired and how he motivates other people. Yeah, we got a couple more, we got a couple more, 10 seconds. I'm a personal trainer, so I do either one-on-one -on -one training, I teach the bag classes, which is a lot for, a lot cardio-based, high-intensity type training, and I do a little bit of everything here. And one, now we're going back down to Alpine Mountain Climbers. The difference here... I wouldn't have it any other way. It's definitely my dream job. My parents always said they, they kind of saw this coming because I was always like a Power Ranger. I was always running around, karate chopping things, and like, yeah. you know, I always watched wrestling as a kid with my dad and boxing and things like that. So it was always, you know, he's always got my interest. And, and then once I transitioned into like you know, middle school and high school, I started, you know, getting more into like martial arts. And, yeah, pop, pop. Growing up, um, I might have you know, struggled with a little bit of you know, ADHD problems and pretty typical things, you know, growing up as a kid and, you know, maybe a little anger issues when I was younger and I didn't necessarily always, you know, butt heads the right way with you know, authority and growing up was, 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 a little, was a little difficult. But, you know, finding martial arts and finding where I am now, the things that I really truly love in life, is, is what humbled me down and, and made me who I am today. So after high school, I just, you know, was working, you know, making a little bit of money so I can train and, and work out, and pretty much just took it from there, found this gym, was a member here myself, and, you know, I told them I had prior experience and different martial arts and different experiences that way, and I would definitely love to be a part of the team, and next thing you know, I'm here. What held me back prior, um, you know, a couple years ago and as I was going through school was really just me and the mentality of things and I didn't really think of things the right way and it was, it was really me. The only thing that held me back was me. Now stop, now stop. Uppercut hook cross. My wanting to be better, to not have setbacks, to be stronger, to be smarter, to be more successful it was really, you know, the flip-flop to my mentality. It's definitely relieving to, you know, to get some aggression out on something that's not necessarily soft like a pillow. You definitely want, you know, an impact on something. It's, it's just something that you have to experience. I believe it's addicting because you'll come in here and you work hard. It's a great feeling. You leave here feeling accomplished. Everybody around you is feeling the same way. It's high energy. Everyone's slapping each other five. It's a great place to be. I think anybody can do anything they want to do, regardless of their history or their past or whatever it may be. I believe if you really truly want something and set your mind to it, you can achieve anything. Nice job, nice job, keep pushing, keep breathing. I always like to say to anybody who comes in for training or for obstacles in life or anything like that, when people tell me they can't, it frustrates me because they can, they just can't do it yet. So I tell them, when you say you can't do something, put yet at the end of it, because eventually you will. You will achieve it. Do you think you have what it takes to get them there? Absolutely. I absolutely do, and I do it every day. And you're gonna send your hips back first? If people are feeling accomplished and they're feeling strong with what they're doing in the gym, 
that's only going to help in the real life. It's only going to help in the real world. So if they're thinking they can do this, they can do that as well. And again, that's just the type of motivation and things that we build in here. Sit all the way up, hands come up, sit back down. There you have it, a look inside the UFC gym and a butt kick in with Kevin Cutter. Hi, I'm Ken Dunnick. Now, if you're a diehard football fan, you may remember me as a tight end on the 1980 NFC champion Philadelphia Eagles and two-time USFL champion Philadelphia Stars. My new team is Philly Man and Jersey Man Magazine, publications designed to cater to men's interests, but never to exclude women. Having a wife and four daughters, I thought that might be in my best interest. Our topics include just about everything, football, politics, cigars, golf, business, fashion, wine, and a host of other subjects that men and women should find interesting. You know, we were looked at as a little crazy when we launched a new magazine in 2010. The economy was still bad and we were fighting the perception that print is dying, but we felt like it was a good idea. And my partners, Joe LaGrosa, Al Kazmark, and I believed in it. So we borrowed some money, rolled up our sleeves, and went to work telling the world about our new brand, first in New Jersey and now in Philadelphia. You are seeing the results of that belief and effort now. So with that, we launch another new medium, television. Who knows what else the future has in store? The bottom line is that we hope to be an example that, despite all of our faults, we're still the greatest country in the world, and the American dream can still be attained by applying the solvents of a heavy dose of belief and a couple of scoops of elbow grease. We are so pleased to have you join us on our journey, and we'll see you next time.